Hello everyone, and let's check out another beautiful chess game by Harry Nelson Filsbury. And Filsbury has the white pieces, and his opponent is Rudolf Sividerski. And this game was played in 1902 in Germany, Hanover, in a very important chess tournament. And Filsbury was an amazing tournament player. He won the most important and the toughest tournaments in his era. So let's check out how this game went on. Harry Nelson Filsbury starts the game with playing d4, d5, and c4, the queen's gambit. And Sividerski didn't accept the gambit, and he played e6, declined. Knight to c3, b6, knight to f3, bishop to b7, c takes on d5, e takes on d5, and e4 by Filsbury, sacrificing the pawn. Black captured the pawn, and knight to e5, bishop to d6, queen to g4, by Harry Nelson Filsbury, and it looks like he is attacking the g-pawn. Black defended with the king. Well, black didn't want to play g6. This is weakening the dark squares for black. Let's take it back. So in the real game, black played this awkward move, king to f8, defending with the king in the real game, and bishop to c4 by Filsbury, attacking the f-pawn. So Sividerski wanted to get rid of the knight, and bishop takes on e5, d takes on e5, queen to d4, by Sividerski, attacking the bishop. What would you do in this position? Well, Filsbury played an amazing move, and he played bishop to d5, sacrificing a piece. What is this move? What is the purpose of this move? Well, Sividerski didn't capture the bishop, and he pushed the pawn, attacking the bishop. Let's take it back. Well, the question of the day, why not capturing the bishop? Then queen to c8, check, king to e7. Well, capturing the c-pawn is a fine move, but bishop to g5 is even better. And you can only block with the pawn. Of course, blocking with the knight is a bad move. Let's say f6, then e takes on f6 with check. And black is losing the game, because after rook to d1, how to defend the bishop? If queen to b4 defending the queen and pinning the knight, then bishop to d2 attacking the queen, well, hoping to discover attack the queen. And how to defend? If something like queen to c5, then white can capture the bishop, and black can't capture back. Because if capturing back, then bishop to b4, check. Also attacking the queen and winning the game. Actually, that was quite a deep calculation by Filsbury. But Sividerski saw the threat and he pushed the pawn. What would you do? Well, Filsbury captured on e4 and getting back the pawn. And black is also getting back the pawn again. Black is a pawn up, bishop to f4, attacking the queen, knight to f6, attacking the queen, black is also attacking the queen, Filsbury, defended, and queen to e7, Sividerski, is also defending the queen, and after queen to e7, Harry Nelson Filsbury, castled in the queen side, knight to e8, by black, well, black wants to exchange the queens, and black is a pawn up. It looks like this is a logical idea, but let's take it back. After queen to e7, actually Pillsbury played a very cool move by castling in the queen side and leaving the bishop, as you can see. What would happen if black would capture the bishop? Can you see what happens? Then rook to d8, check. Black can either block with the queen, or capture the rook, then queen takes queen, check, mate. Well, obviously, if blocking with the queen, then rook takes queen, check, king takes rook, and knight takes knight, black needs to resign. So in the real game, Harry Nelson Filsbury castled in the queen side, 
but night to eat by Sividerski, not exchanging the queens, because Pillsbury is upon them, because black is upon up, knight to a6, defending the knight, rook from h to e1, lining the rook with the queen, rook to d8, again, black wants to simplify the game, when he was a pawn up, but in this position, Pillsbury played another cool move, and he played bishop to d5, that's a discover attack to the queen, and queen to c5, defending the queen, if capturing the bishop, then of course rook takes queen. After bishop to d5 defending the queen. And in here, again, Pillsbury played an amazing move. Well, he sacrificed the exchange. Rook takes on e8 by Pillsbury. That's check. What a move. But black captured the rook with the king. If capturing the rook with the rook, that would be a blunder, because of bishop to d6, check, forking the king and the queen. And again, black needs to resign, white is winning. So in the real game, after Pillsbury captured the rook, rook takes on e8, we have king takes on e8, but then queen takes on g7 by Pillsbury, what a deep calculation. But black captured the bishop, and then losing the rook. Let's take it back. What is wrong with defending the rook, then rook to e1? Basically, black is getting forced checkmated. There is no defense. And again, that was a deep calculation by Pillsbury. What happens if blocking with the queen, if defending with the queen, then bishop takes on f7. And if capturing with the queen, then rook to e1, and again, black is losing, and getting checkmated. As you can see, that was a deep calculation by Pillsbury. So after queen takes on g7, we have c takes on d5, and Pillsbury captured the rook with check, king to d7, and queen takes on h7, king to c8 running away, and Pillsbury captured one more pawn, and suddenly Pillsbury is two pawns up, d4 by black, what now, the knight is pinned, attacking the knight, how to defend, well Pillsbury sees everything, and he played queen to e6, that's check, black can only block with the rook, rook to d7, and then queen to g8, check, Blocking, again, what else? Again, checking the king by Pillsbury, check. Blocking with the rook, and what now? As you can see, black is still attacking the knight, how to defend? The knight is pinned. Pillsbury played this brilliant move, and he played bishop to e3. The pawn is pinned, of course. If capturing the knight, then bishop takes queen. After queen takes rook, the rook is also pinned. After bishop to e3, we have bishop takes on g2 by black. A desperate move, but let's take it back. What happens if capturing the bishop, then queen takes on d7, of course. We check, black is in trouble. So after bishop to e3, we have bishop takes on g2 in the real game. And if queen takes bishop, then this is deflecting the queen, and the rook is no longer pinned. But Pillsbury played a move, and Rudolf Sividerski resigned. Pillsbury simply captured the pawn, rook takes on d4, and black resigns. How to defend the rook? The rook is pinned, also attacking the bishop. How to save the game after this position? Well, there is no defense. If, let's say, defending the bishop and the rook, bishop to c6, then rook takes on d7, bishop takes on d7, and not capturing the queen immediately with the bishop, because then bishop takes queen. First, giving a check. Between move, that's check. King to b7, and then bishop takes on c5. 
and Black needs to resign once again in this position. What an amazing chess game by Harry Nelson Pillsbury. So after Bishop takes on G2, Pillsbury is not buying this trick and he captured the pawn and Black resigned. And thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.